My Comedy DVDs Part 27. Hi, hi, everybody, and welcome to part 27 of a look at my comedy DVDs. So, as usual, stand up, sketch shows, sitcoms, possibly some films, possibly some other comedy type bits. Um, but yeah, let's see what we've got in this pile. So, first up, we've got Graham Norton at the Roundhouse Live. Uh, a fairly recent pickup, it was on my wish list for years, and I finally bit the bullet on it for something like £1.20. Uh, so, I enjoyed Graham Norton. So Graham Norton and his early chat shows. I've watched his chat show occasionally now. I always enjoy it, but uh, it just because uh, of when it's on and what have you. I just basically only watch it if there's somebody on it who I particularly want to see. But yeah, I like Graham a fair bit. Uh, so this is an, just over an hour of stand up recorded at the Roundhouse in London. It's good. Yeah, enjoyed it a fair bit. It's not you know wonderful, but. Good solid stand up. Uh, that's the way Aha Aha Joe Lysit live. So, this was his first, yes, this is his first stand up DVD. Um, really like Joe, very funny guy. Just the same inside the slip. Um, he sort of shot to fame, really through his little bits on 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown and his tales of him socking it to the man, if you like. Um, particularly when he received a parking ticket and he contested it and in the end he won by just being inc increasingly pedantic and silly. Um, that clip is on YouTube, I highly recommend you watch it. But he sort of covers that again on here just because he feels he has to. Uh, nice bit of spot gloss on the slip by the way. Um, but yeah, it's sort of other similar sort of tales, plus more traditional stand-up on here. Um, yeah, very funny stuff. This is Would I Lie to You Series 6. Um, wonderful, wonderful panel show. It's a bit of a strange release physically in that, and I'm just checking, only Series 4, 5 and 6 have been released, all of which I have. Um, yeah, not quite sure. Obviously sales weren't enough for them to carry on doing them, but why they didn't start from the beginning, I'm not quite sure. Obviously the first two series, was it? Might even have been the first three. Um, had Angus Dayton hosting it, and it sort of developed a lot more after Rob Brydon joined, and it became looser. But there's a lot more games played in the early series than there are the later ones. But yeah. Just hilarious stuff, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, Rob Bryden hosts, David Mitchell and Lee Mack are team captains. They have two celebrities on their team and basically they have to tell stories and the opposing team have to guess whether they're true or not. It's basically it. But obviously that can then involve a lot of embroidery and improvisation and bizarreness and yeah, really most consistently funny panel show, I think, on telly. Uh, a Go Faster Strike release, Miles Jupp, Songs of Freedom. So I showed his first release, um, which I can't remember what it's called, but it was about the cricket. Uh, I can probably find it quite quickly. Uh, Fibber in the Heat. Uh, it's another one which I haven't shown yet, and this was his third release. But yeah, I really like Miles, full stop. I think he's he seems to be a really nice guy. Um, he loves to laugh, which I always like. You know, when he's on panel shows and things like that, you can always hear him laugh in a way. And he's a really good stand-up and he seems to be getting better. I, you know, each release I've sort of enjoyed a little bit more than the previous ones. Um, yeah, this is sort of just about, you know, him looking at the world today. But yeah, very funny stuff. Uh... Lee Mac hit the road Mac. This was his 214, 214, 2014 stand up show. Great stuff. He's just such a gifted comedian. Uh, this includes a non swearing version of the show, 
not quite sure why. But, yeah. uh, I had previously shown a signed copy of Vic and Bob's House of Fools Series 1. This is a signed copy of Vic and Bob's House of Fools Series 2. Like the first, this was also through HMV using my Pure Points. That's the name that I was trying to think of in the last part. Um, I was grateful that they, was, they managed to get signed copies of this one, having got the first one through them a year or two beforehand. Um, but I love this sitcom. It is very silly. It is very Vic and Bob. If you don't get Vic and Bob, you won't enjoy this. But I do, and I love it. Uh, this is an audience with the goodies. So, on the night that they announced the big network box set of all the goodies shows, they also did a live event at the Lesser Square Theatre in London. Entitled an audience with the goodies, where the three goodies were interviewed and then did a QA. and a um, B... I can't remember which way round it is. Basically only half of this is on the box set. Um, I think it's the Stuart Lee section, which is the Q&A. No, it's not. No, the Q&A was... The, right. I'm pretty certain it's the Stuart Lee section, which was a straight interview section that is on the box set, but I might be wrong. Um, but then Dick Fiddy, the TV archivist, writer, bloke, did a Q&A section with them. Partly interview as well, but Q&A and there were lots of celebrities in the audience who asked questions. Um, but I had to sort of buy the separate release of this to get the full show, basically, because only half of it was on the box set. But yeah, insightful, funny, entertaining. And of course, the much missed Mr. Tim Brooke Taylor. This is Tim Vine, Sunset Milk Idiot Live. Love Tim Vine, saw this show live in Bournemouth. Absolutely hilarious. Just his usual stuff, but just brilliant for being so um, full of puns and silly props and songs and yeah loads of good extras on here as well great show uh, Ramesh Ranganathan Irrational Live I like Ramesh I don't watch everything he's on because he's pretty much on everything now um, nice embossed slip for those who care about these things and spot gloss on the back and the spa no, not the spine, uh, but on the back anyway. Uh, got this out of curiosity. It's pretty good. You know, it made me laugh quite a lot. It's not one of the best stand-up DVDs I own. Not one I've felt the need to revisit yet, but I remember enjoying it a fair bit. Okay, this is Count Strong's Command Performance, his greatest moments live on stage. Uh, whatever tour this was can't remember what year this was but a copy i got him to sign one of the times i met him to martin best wishes count half strong he always signs in character um although you meet steve you don't meet count half strong he always signs as count half strong nice textured sleeve on this with some nice spot gloss but yeah just hilarious stuff one of his live tours Steve Coogan Live, uh, The Man Who Thinks He's It, with um, Live and Lewd. So these were both shows I had on VHS. Um, so I grabbed this quite cheap to upgrade them to DVD. But two excellent shows. Uh, I think I prefer Live and Lewd. It's an earlier show. It's pre-Alan Partridge. But they're both very, very funny. Um, Simon Pegg is in... Man who thinks he's it. But yeah, just really funny stuff. This is Spike Milligan. I told you I was ill. Uh, so this was a live tribute to Spike. I told you I was ill was what he had put on his gravestone. Uh, so he died in 2002. When was this? 2003. This was released. I can't remember if the tribute was in 2002 or 2003, but it was a BBC tribute of a live show. Harry Enfield, Eddie Izzard, Terry Jones, Paul Merton, Michael Palin, Eric Sykes, Kathy Burke, Stephen Tompkinson, Cleo Lane and the John Dankworth Quintet, John Sargent. Uh, 
some recreations, some readings, some music, some clips, all sorts in there. Very entertaining. Nice tribute to a master. Covering his whole career. Uh, so back to Graham Norton, and this is so Graham Norton. So this was sort of a best of the, ch the Channel Four chat show that sort of launched him. Uh, really funny stuff. Very rude. Lots of celebrities on here. Includes footage you've never seen on TV. Commentary as well. Long time since I've seen it, but it is a lot of fun. Uh, the Smell of Reeves and Mortimer, the complete collection. So this was their first BBC series. He's hesitating. Can you tell? 93, 95. Yeah, I think this was... So they'd done Big Night Out on Channel 4 and then BBC poached them. And I think this was their first BBC series. Two series of it. It's, it's very... Much in the vein of Big Night Out, you know, they've, they've got a desk and then it's loads of sketches and characters and what have you. But hilarious, really good stuff. Yeah, love it. Again, if you don't get Vic and Bob, you won't enjoy it. But if you do, you'll love it. Uh, Sean Locke Live, another great comedian. I've shown previous, or oh, later, I think, I think this was his first DVD I've shown later releases by him as well. Lots of extras on here including his Live at the Apollo set and his documentary of the tour. But yeah, he's just a really strong stand-up, very funny. And finally for this part, The Ruttles 2, Can't Buy Me Lunch. So this was the sequel to The Ruttles, which I've got, he says. Yeah, I've got all you need is cash. That might be coming up in another video. I might have shown it in the past. Oh, it's, in, it's going to be in, it's in the back half of his shelf. This will be in a future video. Um, so many years later, after many attempts, Eric did a sequel to the Ruttles. Cool, Ruttles 2. Can't buy me lunch. Uh, it's not as good as the original for a start. Uh, Neil Innes wasn't involved. I don't think in the actual writing of it, was it? Oh, yes, he was. Oh, I don't know. I didn't think he was, but he's credited all over it, so I might be misremembering. Um, but yeah, it's very good. It's just not as good as the original. So the Ruttles were a, a band who were sort of the Beatles, if the Beatles didn't exist, if that's what makes sense. But yeah, really good stuff. Okay, so that will do for this part. Thank you for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in another video. Thanks. Bye.